Business BM is brought to you in partnership with the Center for Sustainable Transformation, CIST. And a happy new year to you, our listeners, once again. Uh, welcome to our weekly SDG Hub run by the Center for Sustainable Transformation here on Asasi Radio. I'm your host, Kevin Annan, and as usual, I'm here with my co-host... Miss Mary Balami. ...from the Young Reporters for the Environment, Ghana, a program on the CIST. Ghanaian started the new year, 2024, with the news of a new tax bill, which came as a shock to many, especially public transport sector. This has, however, raised lots of concerns among the public. However, in a global climate conscious era, this initiative to address environmental concerns through a targeted tax system marks a significant stride towards sustainability and carbon reduction. Today, we delve into an impactful development in Ghana's legislation, the newly passed emissions tax, also dubbed EcoTax. Passed by the Parliament of Ghana, the tax imposes an annual charge of 100 CDs on all owners of petrol and diesel cars starting from January 2024. Rightly said, Kevin, in a report, the government's objective with this tax is to encourage the use of environmentally friendly energy sources of vehicle power, aligning with its commitment to climate positive actions and carbon offset initiatives. This bill aims to curb emissions whilst fostering a more environmentally responsible industry landscape. Today, we are joined by esteemed guests who will bring varied perspectives on the crucial topic, exploring its implications, challenges, and potential for fostering a greener future. Absolutely. And we are glad to be joined in the studios. Like I said earlier, we have Gloria Ejari. She's a programs officer of Ghana Youth Environmental Movement, GEM, and also Glory Emanuela Apia, acting national coordinator for Ghana Youth Environment Program. Welcome, ladies, and a happy new year to you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Manuela. Thank you for having us. Yes, yeah, it's good to have you here. We have we have uh, an all lady panel. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so for starters, we'd like you to introduce yourselves to us and what you do. Okay. So um, I'm Gloria Ejari. Um, I'm a young Ghanaian environmentalist and sustainable agri-food system advocates. I basically work with young people and local farmers mm. to champion eco-friendly agricultural practices, tackling environmental issues mm. head on. Um, basically, I'm into community empowerment and then influencing of policies okay. within this sector. Mm. Um, that is basically what I do. My work is to help ensure that Ghana transitions to a more sustainable future in the next um, couple of years ahead. We have a lot of work ahead. Yes, yeah, <laughs> we really do. Emanuela, <laughs> tell us briefly about yourself. Hi, my name is Glory Emanuela Apia. I'm currently the acting national coordinator for Ghana Youth Environmental Movement. Um, my specialty is in the forestry sector where I like to plant trees, take adventure into the forest and generally make sure that our nature system is really backed up and then a climate that's, that's also not suffer from the lack of trees and the lack of a better environment. Thank okay, you. so you're replacing the trees that people are cutting down. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to you, uh, Gloria, mm -hmm. uh, in the context of global climate action, how significant is Ghana's move towards implementing an, an emissions tax, especially considering its economic and environmental impact within the region? Okay, thank you very much, Kevin, for this question. Um, First of all, I would want to acknowledge um, the leadership's efforts in making this proactive step in trying to address climate change. For me, it gives me some sense of encouragement mm -hmm. that, yes, the government wants to do something about this global challenge or crisis we are facing or we have at hand. And that's um, one positive side of this. Um, I think for the emission, we have an emission tax. Yes, it's good, but I feel... Personally, I feel the timely, uh, the the time at which it came, is just maybe not perfect mm. for the kind of situation we have here um, in Ghana. Um, one of the things I've learned in my journey as an environmentalist is that usually when you are creating climate solutions, you have to consider several factors, okay. not just the environmental angle. Socially. Is it socially friendly? You know, is it economically viable? Yeah. These are some of the things we have to consider. Um, so for me, I see this having like several factors attached to it. It's a proactive step, but we might have missed out on the timing as to when to have brought this in. Um, and that is one of the things I think that this conversation will help us delve into further to break it down and yeah. um, to consider the social aspect of it, the social impact of it on our people, on the economy of Ghana, you know, 
considering other gaps that we also have in the system and the need for us to bridge this to achieve that goal of mm. um, having an so equal friendly. So the timing is wrong. Yeah, in actual, I, I think the timing is not right because right. we have a lot of gaps. Yeah. Look at our transport system. Like, we have a lot to do. Transportation is not readily available, accessible by the people. It's not even affordable when you look at people at the grassroots. So we have to restructure all of that before we even oh. come and tax them the more. Yeah, so in my opinion, it's a proactive step, which is great. But the timing, the timing is, is right. not perfect. Mm. So for you, it's a good initiative, but bad timing. Yeah, I think. It's okay. Bad. Emanuela, what do you have to say? Do you agree with her or you have different thoughts on that? Uh, I would have to agree with Gloria on this one because, yeah. um, like she said, a lot of structures are not in place. Um, first off, um, the people we are tasking, we are taxing, do, do they have the right knowledge? Do they even know what emissions are? Do they understand what is happening? And then we just jump in straight and we decide to tax them. Even though this is a good initiative, I think we have a lot of work to do, mm. which should have been done a long time ago by building the capacities of these people before even going in to tell them that, okay, hey, you are emitting too much, so we are taxing you. Or, hey, you are not emitting at all, so we are giving you an incentive. Right. Yeah. So um, to add to that, what other challenges do you think that we'll face in implementing this tax? Because you've, you've rightly mentioned some challenges there with the mm. fact that they may not know much about the tax to even accept to, to pay taxes. Are there any other challenges that government may face to implement this? Yeah, so like I said, the first challenge is the fact that the people that we are going to take these monies from do not understand what is happening at all. So therefore, there will be some kind of friction between the government and these people. They will not be willing to pay their tax and collecting these monies will become a very big problem. Um, there will also be the problem of um, uh, these people, which is the GPRTU or whoever is in charge of the transport services, trying to um, extort money from the citizens of the, of the country mm. who are already facing hardships as it is now. And then I think, uh, aside that, there are so many other um, challenges that are, can arise from this already. Um, our energy system is not that efficient. And even if the government says they are going to bring electric cars or electric vehicles, um, which what is the source of power that we are going to use to charge these vehicles? Yeah. And there's a gap there. So there are lots of challenges. I think government should have taken its time with this one. But it's a good initiative. Like Gloria said, yeah. the time was not right. And already GPRTU yeah. is threatening an increase in transport fares. Yeah. 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 Um, Gloria, do you have anything to add to that? Or yeah, she think, said it all? Yeah, I think she said the major point is, which means that definitely I don't see this being sustainable, yeah. to be very honest. And we are causing a lot of chaos within society, um, all in the name of trying to address environmental challenges. I think we need community buy-in because this thing we are trying to address, this global challenge we are trying to address, we need people to tag along to understand and work together with. So if people are left out and just like being pushed on to just tag along things, I don't think we can, we can. achieve that mm. global. Um, Indeed. So, you know, one of the main aim or objectives of this task, tax, for instance, is for people to opt for greener options, right? Maybe the e-vehicles and all that. And then at this point, we, con we keep on, you know, importing this fossil fuel cars. So do you believe this tax really would you know um, encourage that sort of shift to um, cleaner options anyways let me come back again to my point that the timing because the timing is not right i really feel it will be very difficult even when you think about reduction in carbon emission how feasible can this be mm -hmm. you know because this would have been feasible if we had like government restructuring the entire transport system. And then now we have, let's say, more of the Ayalolo or the Kufo bus, mm. where all kinds of people, classes of people can even use some of these services. Then people can leave their cars at home. So we know that like there's less usage of their personal cars and all of that, all of that. on the streets, unless someone who wants to just go their own way to do that. Then you have that tax coming in towards let's say discourage them from using their personal vehicles mm -hmm. you know if it happens this way then you see that this can help us in reducing the importation of this but already we don't have cars the church is even limited it's not available so even bringing in this tax people would want to bring in more church to make mm -hmm. more money so that they can cover up for the tax that government wants to deduct so i 
So you, you made mention of the fact that the timing is wrong, but do you think it adequately addresses the environmental impact of fossil fuel cars? And what strategies can be employed to manage this, you know, if more effectively? <laughs> okay, so, um, well, the timing is wrong, but adequately, I think there's really a lot to do. So it, for me, it doesn't really, we need too much to do to ensure that it meets that um standard that we wanted yes. to or mm. to meet that um, global agenda we have to reduce the emission we want to um, push or we want to achieve to also promote the use of eco-friendly um, transport system and all of that. Absolutely. For me, I think we have too many gaps within the system that needs to be resolved. Yes, so Else, mm. this this particular tax, I don't know where it would take us um, to as a nation. So do you also believe there should be additional regulations or incentives in place to encourage the importation and use of, you know, cleaner, more fuel efficient vehicles in Ghana? Yeah, I think there should be. There mm. should be um, a lot of policies. Um, now, we should try and discourage people from bringing this um how do you call it these the fossil fuel, fossil cars, fuel yeah. cars into the system that's one of the approach you can do i think yes the tax was had that in mind but it wouldn't meet that so we should find other means of making this possible for them if we had created an enabling environment for people to use other options or better transport systems i'm not really going to talk about the electric ones because i don't know if we even have the capacity yet as a nation to do that we still have people off the grid who still want access, access. to mm -hmm. um electricity mm -hmm. so for me i don't even want to go or toe that line but i think that if we have a good transport system the buses that can carry enough people to reduce the emissions then we can provide an enabling environment for people to not look too far yeah. you know in finding um alternatives or let's say sources of transportation for communities indeed, or for indeed, themselves. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Anyway, <laughs> that's a lot. Emanuela, um, from everything that is being said, right, uh, we are hearing a lot of challenges and the flip side of things. Is there anything good you can say about this? <laughs> I mean, we've, we've established that it's a good initiative, but bad timing. But regardless of the reality of what we, we have right now on the ground, the fact that it, it's been implemented, is there anything we could benefit from it? Do you see any benefits at all? Um, okay, so the benefits will have to be in the monetary aspect when government finally gets the money, the, the target, which is about 450 million Ghana cities. And then that money is then put into um, climate change adaptation and resilience for the communities that are suffering from the effects the most in the country. And that is when I think we may be able to see something good come out of this. But, but do, you, do you think getting that amount of money is feasible do you think it, it can be done getting the money is a challenge <laughs> it's a very big challenge because the people will not understand why we are trying to take that amount of money from them in the first place yeah. but if we do get the money then the money can be put into climate change mitigation and adaptation yeah. and then we can see progress from there well so so there are a lot of conditions yeah. for success yes. <laughs> a whole lot <laughs> anyway that's interesting well yeah. we we hope that at least they'll find a way government will find a way to implement this in a way that gives us success regardless of all the uh, apprehension that we have about yeah. it yeah and we we also want you touched on this already about the um, importation of cars that use fo fossil fuels and i was thinking while you guys were discussing i was thinking how do you navigate this dilemma where you don't want to import fossil fuel cars knowing the adverse effects that it has but then there's a reality that that's probably the cheapest option um that is probably the kinds of cars that can survive on the kinds of roads that we have so how do we quiz that reality yeah. against the ideal that we have it's a difficult question but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like you said it's it's been made cheaper you know i don't yeah. know we mentioned policies you know if we we could have like policies that will make that look like a disadvantage to the people 
right. I think that, that, that would be one of the easiest ways in which we can reduce mm. the importation of some of these vehicles. So let's say if you are importing and then you have to pay a lot just to get your car out there, you know. The thing is, you're, so you're many, already paying a lot, a lot at this moment. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it's so tough to, you know, have access to some of these things. But then it's very easy to have access to, let's say, electric cars because, of course, government has plans of importing some of these yes, things. Yeah. So, like, it's very easy to have access to some of these things. Then, why not? I think I'll not stress myself. So, do you, do, you, do you say we should make the importation of fossil fuel cars expensive, but then the e-vehicles at least affordable? Yeah, I think that's the only way you can discourage people mm. from. I think that's what government is even trying to do with this emission tax by making it very expensive in using it. But yeah. it's just. Again. But then, but then, while government tries to make this expensive, there needs to be alternatives. Exactly. Actionable and function functional alternatives for us. Mm -hmm. For example, the buses, our transportation systems. The least said about it, the better. And the road systems that we have are a problem. So if we are to leave our fossil fuel cars behind or do not import any of them, are the buses good enough to transport us around? Do they go to the places that we want to go to? Yeah. And can we afford electric cars? Can we power them? Can we charge charge them up? I don't know how they operate. Probably plug in a charger and charge yeah. them up. Where where do we do this? Yeah. Because we also have power outages, outages and so on. There yeah. are parts of the country that do not have electricity. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. And yeah. um, yeah. taking into consideration the fact that looking at our transport, you know, transportation sector for instance, is mainly trotro, secondhand um, fossil fuel cars from mm. the global north. Exactly. So, yeah. how then do you make them understand that you need to pay, you know, some of these, um, you know, taxes and all that? So now back to the conversation. What measures can be put in place to ensure, Gloria? Let me come to you. What measures can be put in place to ensure that? You know, the emissions tax is not disproportionately affecting lower income individuals who may rely on older, more emission intensive vehicles. <laughs> I think I should be asking government. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know, but this evidently affects lower income communities or people, you know. How then do we ensure that it doesn't? Hmm. It's a tough one because I don't, first of all, this whole tax has been a headache for people, you know, and people are trying to navigate it's, to even survive in this country. Do you get it? So um, I don't know if governments can bring up a plan. For me, I think we need a plan. Okay, we've brought in the tax without a plan. Can we have an immediate plan like that can lead us as a nation to a better transport system? I realized that most of our leaders had the opportunity to be at COP, mm -hmm. Dubai, yeah. and when you see the transport system there and how they have like various options, yeah. you are using metro, you are using all, it's all timed and all of that, well structured, they are using tech to solve some of these challenges. If we can have like a plan, a transition plan within the next um, couple of years, especially as we are in these political times, we need a leader who has a vision for the transport the system. Transport sector. I mm. think it will be one of the ways in which we can also address some of these things. But 100 CDs annually, is it expensive or you think it's fair? Annually, that's a year. Well, <laughs> 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 you know, it will sound very affordable, but it's not. You know, realistically, it's not. Because that's like a chunk of someone's yearly, yearly yeah. I don't know, um, money that they can gather or save, you know, and that can also buy food for even five people, possibly, yeah. oh, yes, at the yes, grassroots, yes, yes. do you get it? So, for me, so I think we need a roadmap, back to your question, I think we need a practical roadmap that can transition Ghana um, or us into that phase. Also, we can promote some um, eco-friendly transportation system, like the use of bicycles, mm -hmm. you know, and then we even realize that countries like South Africa, they have like roads that are not used. We don't have cars yeah. being used. Those bicycle lanes and bicycle all that. Bicycle lanes, you know, promote yeah. like health walk mm. as part of it, you know, just to reduce Use. the whole... So, you know, one of the major concerns of the public, for instance, like from interviews here and there, you could hear that they don't understand why they should even pay emissions tax. 
So it could be that maybe they don't even understand the um, 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 climate change or the impact of this whole fossil fuel cars on, on the environment. And so what advocacy strategies, let me come to you, Glory, what advocacy strategies can be employed to raise awareness about this you know, emissions tax, its purpose, and the broader environmental goals it aims to achieve in Ghana? Uh, okay, so um, first of all, I think um, the advocacy should not just be on the emissions tax. Mm. It should start from climate change as a whole because you need to start from one before you can go to two. We need to break down the information that is contained in climate change, um, all the big scientific words, break it down into, um, if possible, our local dialects mm. and go to the grassroots levels and have this um, sensitization through um, the information centers, maybe regular news on yeah. the information centers. Mm educating these people about climate change and its effects and then we can come in and say that okay so emissions are part of the are part of the reasons why the climate is changing and yeah. um, it's January and I've already seen the rain two times yes. so mm. if we are able to explain all these for the people to understand well so like I said in the local communities they have information centers so you can use information centers over there and um, in the cities we have radio stations of course we are here yeah. we have the television sets we have um, national tv we have social media which has become a very powerful tool yeah. when we use all these measures and of course collaborate with the non-profit organizations like gem and yre yourself uh, we'll be able to spread this information yeah. far and wide for yeah. all and sundry to hear and then the understanding will be better reached. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I think I'll add? just yeah, mm. I'll just touch briefly on it. For me, I think that community-based approach is very, very important, mm. and that's also one aspect of the work we do at Gem Grassroots. When we go down there to the grassroots to engage people, we had one um, community advocacy was it last year in mm. March on Galamse because we wanted to understand what the people really see are they seeing it the way we see, we see it? it do they yeah. see any problem with it so if we have things like this going on and we are able to go down to their level break the concept down like ella said yeah. and then let them know that it's not something that is far from them something they can see around them that is when they can now start to think of ways to do that because during that galam say action people were now okay if this is not good what do you think i can do to also get money within the shortest time right. we said you can do snail mm. farming bamboo production and wow. all of that you know mm. so if people have a practical view at the grassroots because these are the people who actually contribute to what we do Indeed. i think that is when we can also and see you, you also think there should have been maybe stakeholder consultation because gprt for instance they don't even understand it and they are threatening to increase um, um, transport fares mm -hmm. So do you think there should have been like stakeholder consultation before even this bill was passed? Yes, honestly, there should have been. I don't know if NGOs were even involved, environmental movements. It was like a surprise. New Year then, gift. You well, know. Uh, I, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that some stakeholder <laughs> engagement happened. Yeah, because I, maybe I, it I, did. I don't want to believe that there was none at all. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it did. I, I don't have any well, idea about from, that. But from the interviews, well, if... If there were, they wouldn't have been threatening transport's, you know, fair increase. Exactly. Yeah. So it looks as if, I mean, GPRT, you weren't really even, you know. So we have a lot of work to do, really. Lots. We yeah, really have a lot. A whole lot. Anyway, so the main, the main thing here is education. Yeah. At the grassroots level, the yeah. local level, community engagement and all of that. Yeah. To reach everybody and let them understand that it's not too big for them. Yeah. It's actually something they can do themselves. Yeah. Interesting. And so, uh, Emanuela, you mentioned uh, the, the projection of the amount of money that could be raised from this um, tax, eco-tax. Um, how can we ensure that the money act is actually used for its purpose? That's a very nice from, question. From a perspective <laughs> of an outsider. This question would, would be best for someone in government. Yes. But from, from your perspective, your work and everything, what do you so, think? So, um, like you said, this question would be best for someone in government. Yeah. Um, so, so far, there's been a lot of discussions on climate change and its adverse effects in Ghana. And we are yet to hear if there's actually a special committee in government that is looking into climate change, looking into various kinds of solutions. So, I think the best way to to know if this money will actually be used for its purpose is to have a specific committee or maybe a specific body of government mm. that is that is free from any political affiliation <laughs> wow. that will be set aside and set as the custodians of that particular fund and 
<laughs> nice ideas. <laughs> with, we, we ion nice. Harry. <laughs> with Ion Hand, mm -hmm. make sure that the money goes where it's supposed to go. Yeah. That's I my think. idea. Nice. Interesting ideas. I hope yeah, I hope someone heard us. Someone <laughs> in power heard us. In government. Yeah. And um, in wrapping up, uh, would like you to tell us: do you, Are there any successful examples of implementing emissions tax anywhere around the world that you think Ghana could learn from? Yeah. Are there any countries you know about that have successfully done this? Well, I think um, for my little research, I think. Um, Niger, okay, yeah, here Niger oh, has just our couple of oh, neighbors, yeah, <laughs> policies which which is actually very interesting. Mm. Okay, um, and then also like I mentioned earlier, South Africa, mm. um, having like various means just to reduce emission, you know, as um one of their contributions to address this whole climate change, um, challenge. I think Egypt as well, okay, yeah, mm. has also some of these um initiatives in place to help cut down some of um this whole approach but approach. yeah mm. indeed thank you so much ladies for sharing your insights on this conversation it's evident that Ghana's emission tax is a key player in the global fight against climate change um, its success will rely on collaborative efforts from industries you know governments and also the citizens so please tune in same time next week as we continue discussions on all things sustainable development right here on Asasi radio 99.5 so that people and the planet can prosper if you have any topic you want us to discuss please share with us and shoot an email to sdg hub at cestint.org remember dear listeners the future is in our hands and it's our responsibility to ensure a healthier planet for generations to come Keep raising your voices, keep advocating for change, and keep tuning to the SDG Hub for more insightful conversations. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and stay eco-conscious. And that's a wrap on the SDG Hub. Thank you for staying with us here. Uh, we've been speaking with Gloria Ejari, Programs Officer, Ghana Youth Environmental Movement, GEM. Uh, we also had with us Glory Emanuela Apia, Acting National Coordinator for Ghana Youth Environment Movement. I've been your host, Kevin Annan, and I did this with my co-host. This is Mary Balani. We go back to... Caleb.